Um, so I'll just go ahead and get started and I'll share my screen here. So today um, we're talking about um, the MIG 2021 event for Foxtails and Targets. And uh, we'll be talking about um, a little bit of an introduction of the game. So what the history is, um, what the goal of the game is for MIG. Um, we'll also be talking about how to make the Foxtail and the nuances between a traditional Foxtail and non-traditional Foxtail. Um, then we'll do some more technical review of the technical package and how to score the event as well as how to submit results. And um, then we'll talk about how you can prepare for this event within your schools and with your students. And then uh, just review some important information. So um, the game of Foxtails was played by most Indigenous uh, communities uh, traditionally and it was played to develop accuracy. So although it was a game in the beginning, um, kids would play this and they would just practice shooting at targets and whatnot. And as they became more and more developed in accuracy at target practicing, then they could eventually hunt small game using fox sails. So things like rabbits, um, uh, maybe grouse, things like that. For the MIG event, the goal of the game will be to accumulate as many points as you can within a 45 second period by hitting the targets with the foxtail. And what you need for the game is of course your foxtails, your targets. Um, a target can be pylons, empty jugs, cans, whatever it is. Um, sorry, I was just letting someone in here. Uh, another thing that you need is a baseline. So whether you're playing this in your school gym or outside, you just need something to mark a baseline. So that's the line where um, the participants have to stay back. They can't cross it. And lastly, you need a timer or a stopwatch. So that could be as simple as using your phone as a timer. Um, so how to make a foxtail. So traditionally, this was made as a toy or eventually a tool, like I said, and this was uh, made with leather and um, the actual ball part was made with either grass or hair, even dung. Um, and those were for the toy. And then when you used it as a tool for hunting, you could put something a little bit harder in there, like a stone. Um, so once the stones were in the foxtail, then you could shoot it um, at small game for hunting. The non-traditional way is, of course, what we're going to be doing for, um, for the Manitoba Indigenous Games. And for that, you need pantyhose or like knee-high socks, balloons, and rice. So it's pretty straightforward on what you need. And we're just going to watch this video and I'll kind of go through um, what the steps of making a foxtail are. So you'll need, um, for this, you'll need a water bottle, rice, a funnel, um, pantyhose, a balloon, and a pair of scissors. So you start by using the, sorry, do this here. Perfect. Sorry, guys. You start by using your funnel and pouring your rice into the balloon. After that, you're gonna poke a little hole in the top of the water bottle. Um, and this is gonna allow you to blow air into the balloon. So you'll see here, um, you'll take your balloon and you'll put it on top of the mouthpiece of the water bottle. And then you're gonna blow air in the balloon. So you see how the balloon just puffed up here and we wanna keep the air in. So you're just gonna cover that up with your finger and then you're gonna pour the rice in. Once the rice is poured in, you have to suck that extra air out and you're gonna to wanna to make um, a really soft sort of ball with the rice in that balloon. So um, you have to suck the air out of the balloon and just be really careful. You don't wanna suck up that rice. I know I've seen it happen before where people kind of inhale a rice piece. So you just have to be careful at this step. And once that uh, the air is out, you twist 
uh, the rice into the bottom of the balloon. And then you're gonna use the extra balloon sort of at that neck piece of it and you're going to wrap it around the ball so sort of turning it inside out and once you have that then you have uh, the ball for your foxtail next you grab your pantyhose or your knee-high sock whatever you're using and you put your ball into the sock all the way to the bottom where the foot goes and you tie it off with a knot and that's it, that's all it is for making a non-traditional foxtail. Um, so just moving on. So now we're gonna talk a little bit more of the, about the technicalities of actually um, playing the game itself. Um, we're gonna focus specifically on the setup for the event, uh, the competition format, the competition rules, and then we'll talk about scoring and tie-breaking procedures. So if you ever forget, um, our technical packages are posted on our website, um, so you can always find them there, and it's always going to be the most updated version. So I just want to note here that if you have looked at the tech pack already, we did make a few small updates today, um, nothing drastic, just some small, small changes. So you'll see that we've updated it March 24th, 2021. So that's just for you guys to note. Um, so I said, we're gonna start with event setup. So we're gonna click here. And um, so setting up this event, basically you guys, just like any of the other MIG events, you guys can host this however works best for your schools. So um, if your school needs to stay in cohorts or if you need to stay in specific classes or maybe, um, you know, who knows, but maybe if everyone can participate at one time, then you guys can do whatever works the best. Um, it can be held indoors or outdoors. All you need to do is mark your boundary line. So just a nice long baseline of um, showing where they can't, how they can't go past that boundary line. And then you're gonna set up your 10 targets. So your targets, like I mentioned earlier, they can be pylons, it can be, um, empty milk jugs, it can be cans, it can be pretty much anything that you might find in your equipment storage room at your gym. Um, and to set up your 10 targets, I do have a little um, diagram, so I'll show you here. So this is just an example of what like an overhead view would look like. So you have your baseline and then you have 10 targets. So you have four rows of targets, um, the closest row being about five meters away, and then about seven meters away for the second row. The third row is about 10 meters away, and the very, very last target here is about 15 meters away. I also have noted some distances in between the targets. So you can see here, I have like between these two circles, three meters. That doesn't need to be specific. It doesn't need to be exactly uh, three meters. What I really wanna emphasize is that each of these targets has a clear shooting lane. So I wouldn't want to stack all three of these targets in one column. I want them to be staggered so that they can clearly shoot at it without any obstacles. So for this event, uh, the format of the event is timed. So the participants have a maximum of 45 seconds to hit as many targets as they can by throwing the foxtails at the targets. The participant is gonna have a maximum of 25 foxtails. So they should be either like in a bucket or in a pail or in a pile, um, all the foxtails um, easily accessible for the participant to grab and to shoot as quickly as they can. So it's a maximum of 25 foxtails per, per um, person. And if they happen to shoot all those foxtails before the 45 seconds, runs out, then their turn is over. Um, we do need to make sure that when they're throwing the foxtails that they're being thrown by the tail. So that long sock part and not by the actual ball. Um, and then I wanna note that the targets do not need to be knocked over. They just need to be clearly hit. So if it's been hit, um, it has to be obvious that it was hit, 
you have to be certain about that so that you can count it towards the score. Um, but if it doesn't knock over the pylon or the jug or whatever you're using, that's okay. And also the participant is allowed to move along the baseline so they can move left to right and um, create those shooting lanes however they feel they need, but they cannot pass the baseline. And lastly, there is no limit of times one target may be hit. So if um, whoever's uh, turn it is, you know, they've been really accurate with this one target, they might choose to hit it over and over again. That's sort of up to the participant and how they wanna score their points. I'm just gonna check the chat for internet. That's okay, Godfrey, it'll be um, recorded and then sent out to yourself and to Sydney, who's also in Bloodline with you. Um, so let's talk about scoring the event next. So um, here on this slide, you can see that I've just copy pasted the diagram. So it's easy to give the example. So we have um, on my score sheet, we have Joe. He is of the 16U age category. He is male and he identifies as Inuit. So I'm gonna go through that with my participants before their turn. When um, they're ready for their turn, I'm gonna turn on the timer for 45 seconds and they have 25 foxtails to shoot within that time slot. And as they're going, I'm gonna be marking down which targets they've hit. So um, I can definitely make this clearer. I'm noticing like I have diamonds here and then letters here. So I can definitely make this a lot clearer on the score sheet for the future. So ABC is the one that's five meters away. So Joe hit ABC five times. So I knocked, or excuse me, I marked five notches here. DEF would refer to the triangles that are seven meters away. And he hit one of those targets one time. So I'm marking that as he's going along. I can also have a helper if I need someone to do the stop clock and someone to do the score sheet, that's okay. So after the turn is done, then you're going to do this math. So we have five times five is 25, one times seven is seven, and then you have a grand total at the bottom. Now, if um, you end up having a tie within participants, so a tie is considered um, when the same age group and gender has the same score. So once you, if you ever encounter this, um, this is how you would break the tie is by starting by counting the greatest number of 15s, the greatest number of 10s, the greatest number of sevens, et cetera. So I do have an example for everyone. So here um, we have Joe once again, and we also have Bob. So they're both in the 16U male category and uh, they have the same score. They're both scored for 32. So what I would need to do in this case is to um, follow the technical package and follow the rules. So the first rule is to count the greatest number of 15s. Well, I can clearly see on the score sheet here that neither one of them have 15s. So then the next one would be to um, look at the tens. So the greatest number of tens, Joe doesn't have any and Bob has one. So Bob wins this tie. So he wins between the two of them because he has more tens than Joe does. I think I have a chat, so let me just check that here. Oops. Oh no, maybe not. Okay, so if you are um, wondering how you can start preparing for this event at your school, maybe the kids are getting antsy or you're looking for some new things to do, you can definitely get them to start practicing uh, shooting their foxtails. Um, so first, of course, you're gonna have to make your foxtails. If you have not already received your equipment, you will be right away. Um, so if you have that stuff already, you can start making your foxtails or you know, it might be some stuff that you have at your school, some balloons, some rice from, your, um, from the grocery store, whatever it is, you might be able to make some foxtails even before we get the equipment to you. Um, so what you need to do once you have those made 
the first thing is just get the kids um, throwing the foxtails. Remember, you want to teach them to throw from the tail, so that sock, and not from the ball. The first thing that I like to do when I am playing with foxtails is to just warm up by throwing the foxtail in the air and catching it. Um, so throwing it and catching it myself. I'm, it's an individual activity. Next, what you could do is if they're getting pretty good at that, you can progress and you can ask them to play catch with a partner. So you would be able to throw your foxtail to your partner and they would have to catch it by the tail and then they would throw it back to you and so on. You can get them to start closer together and then as they get um, progressively better, then they can back up and they can shoot, excuse me, pass at further distances. After that, um, you can definitely set up targets and get them to practice aiming at the targets. So I would start with um, some larger targets um, and setting them up relatively close. And then eventually you could always progress to using smaller targets or setting up the targets a little bit further away. Okay, so I have a few questions here. So I'm just gonna answer those. If we don't have time to make box tails, will they be provided? How do the targets stay stable when they're hit? Can more than one station be done at these? Yes, okay. So um, Gerard, uh, to answer your questions, so, we have not, I would love to make these box sales for you guys, but as you can imagine, uh, we are equally as busy, unfortunately. Um, but what I would recommend is maybe um, during like recess or if uh, your students are just wanting to help, I would definitely get them to help you make the foxtails. Um, each kid could make one or two or three and it would definitely speed up the process. Um, for the targets being uh, helping them stay stable when they're hit. So it would depend on what you're using. If you're using pylons, uh, you can use some of those uh, heavier pylons. Um, if you're using like a milk jug or um, something like that, maybe adding some dirt or some stones to the bottom of it so it stays still. Or um, what I would use is like cans of soup, cans of bean, something that's already pretty heavy that won't get knocked down. Um, if they do get knocked down though, it would be fine for um, maybe one of the students or if you have anyone helping you to sort of run into um, that course and to just plop, prop that back up. And yes, one station can, more than one station can definitely be done at one time. Um, depending on the school numbers and what uh, has been registered with me is how I've determined how many foxtails to send to that school. Um, so I'll be either providing 25 foxtails or 50 foxtails, so sort of enough for the, for the groups to be divided. So as long as you have at least 25 foxtails per station, you can definitely do as many stations as you'd like. And for targets, you don't need to make them no. Um, if you requested them from me, then you'll be receiving pylons. And if you have already said that you have targets, then you can be creative and use anything you like. Like I said, milk jugs, cans, uh, bowling pins, um, pylons, like really anything that's maybe in your storage equipment room. I hope that answers everything. Just let me know if I missed anything, okay? Um, but you know what, I think that's pretty much everything that I have to share for this event. So Donna or Godfrey or Gerard, if you guys do have anything that you, um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to just unmute or you guys can put them in the group chat and I'd be happy to answer those for you. I'll just give you a minute if you'd like. Yeah, I, I totally understand what you're saying, Gerard, with like not necessarily a lot of people volunteering to help. Um, 
I think, I mean, from my experience so far, um, from talking to the students and whatnot, I think a lot of them are looking forward to helping or to, uh, sorry, not to helping necessarily, but to participating. So if we can definitely um, encourage like even the older students to get involved however they can by helping out, um, I'm hoping that that'll be helpful for you guys. Um, so that's really all the key information about foxtails that I had to share. So I'm just gonna skip over to some important information just to wrap everyone's time up here. It's Wednesday, I know you guys have other things to do. <laughs> you had a long day. Um, so the first important thing being uh, that the MIG equipment, if you are below the 53rd parallel, every school, every school below the 53rd has received their equipment already, or it has already been shipped out. Um, if you are above the 53rd parallel, we're still sort of um, just managing the logistics of shipping to you guys and packing your, your orders, but that will be done by the end of the month. So by next Wednesday, everything should be shipped out to you and I will send that confirmation to you when it has been shipped. If you have any suggestions on how or what is the best way to get things to your community, I definitely welcome those. And uh, I would really appreciate if you could send me that through email, whether it's best to send it through the RCMP or Guardwine or Perimeter Air. If you have any information like that, uh, that would be very helpful for me. Um, next, just some refreshers for the archery certification. I do believe the three schools who are online right now are already certified, so you guys are good. But for those who are maybe listening in at a later time, the deadlines are coming up quite uh, quickly, actually. Um, so March 31st, next Wednesday, is the deadline to do your certification if you need MASRC to provide you equipment. If you are not certified by this time, then we will not be able to provide that equipment for you. And if you have your own equipment and you're planning to use that for MIG, then your deadline is April 23rd. If you are not certified by the 23rd of April, you will not qualify to um, enter your MIG results. So it would sort of be a waste if um, you know your students are really looking forward to this and that you didn't do your certification. So please stay on top of that. And lastly, yes, we will be canceling um, the long distance training session next Wednesday. It is spring break and it's also probably the most simple event that we're hosting. So I will make a post and I'll send an email out to everyone sort of with some key information that you need to uh, maybe pay attention to while setting up your long distance event, such as the different um, lengths of runs and things like that for the different age groups. But I'm sure that you guys are all familiar with um, how that would work. So we definitely don't need to have a training session and you guys all need a nice break during spring break. So um, you guys are off the hook for next week. And as always, my contact information. So if ever you need to get in touch with me, um, please feel free to give me a phone call either at the office or just shoot me an email and I'm happy to help however I can. Mm. Gabby, we sent our archery registration in already, yes? Yes, you did. Cheryl is all certified. Yeah, I thought, yeah, because we yeah. sent. But I can still do that just in case, right? Yep, Before. yeah, absolutely. Um, that would actually be encouraged. Yeah. Perfect. So we Okay. Um, well, that's everything from me. So if you guys have anything else, any other questions, I'm happy to, um, to field those now. All right, well, I think I got all your questions, hey, just the three of us here for today. Um, so let's just wrap it up. You guys have a great evening. And uh, like I said, if you have any other questions that come to mind or if you need any 
supports, just uh, shoot me an email or a phone call. Okay. Have a great night, you guys. Thank you. Thank yeah. you, Gabby. You're welcome. Bye. Bye, Godfrey. Thanks, and nice meeting everybody again. Catch you later. Take care, Jared. Oh, hey, Gabby. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's on a side a nice thing. Um, we're doing, we're building a cultural wellness and fitness center.